Hey what's up everybody, Trophinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Today we once again feature a leader we haven't really talked about before, Queen Calante of Sintra, the grandmother of Ciri. Often called the Lioness of Sintra, this strong woman kept an entire country in check while plenty of men were trying to kick her off the throne after the untimely demise of her husband, King Rögner. She later remarried, taking the honorable Ace Twirsak, uncle to Krach on Crate, as her man, but even he left the rule of Sintra to his fearless wife. Even when the Nilfgaardians were knocking at her door, Queen Galante sacrificed everything for her country, eventually even taking her own life and sending Ciri away to prevent the Blacklads from ever gaining a legitimate hold over Sintra itself. In honor of this amazing woman, I dubbed this week's deck the Lioness deck. Let's talk about Calante's ability first, the Pincer Maneuver. We'll need to get used to the name of each leader ability, since Iron Judgment will decouple abilities from leader skins, meaning you can use any ability with any leader within the same faction. But back to the ability. Pincer Maneuver allows you to play any Northern Realms card from your hand, allowing you to play two cards in one turn, and then allows you to pick any card from your deck and add it to your hand. This allows you to perform some incredible combos or do extra setup within the same turn to limit the risk of losing those setup cards. This deck doubles down on setting up the board with tactical combos, playing multiple cards in one turn and even utilizing charges more efficiently than Damavent himself. This deck is heavily charge focused so you'll recognize a lot of cards that you would usually see in a Damavent deck, since he seems more suited to support those units. Setting up those units is still tricky in a Northern Realms deck, however. To benefit from charges, units need to stay alive, which is what the Lioness deck bypasses by being able to play multiple cards in one turn. Setting up a support unit and an order unit in the same turn allows you to protect that unit in one go, limiting the options for your opponent. Or you can play two order units in one go, providing multiple targets for your opponent, which they will most likely not be able to take out, giving you at least one survivor. We'll talk about specific combos in a minute, but right here you can check out the deck composition. For the purpose of this video I'm going to assume you know what most of the basic cards here do, so that we can focus on the stronger cards and the plays that you can perform with this deck. Let's get to it. As I said, this deck focuses on charge based units, and it includes basically any type. On the defensive front we have the Kedweni Sergeants, Fizogota and Neneke, all able to boost a unit by one for each of their charges. Fizogota is special here since he will gain a charge for each card played by any player. More on him in a second. On the offensive side we have the Lyrian Arbalests, Reinforced Ballista and Visigurd, each able to damage an enemy unit by one per charge. Arbalests gain extra charges per friendly order unit played, the Ballista gains one charge for each Warfare card played and Visigurd gains charges equal to the amount of friendly boosted units when he's played, so only once. Hubert Rake, on the other hand, can apply 2 points of bleeding per charge, providing the most value per charge, but of course bleeding can be mitigated, so it's not guaranteed. To support these order units we have the Sintrian Envoys, Winches and Taller, providing 2 or 3 charges to a unit, with the Winch also adding a 3 point boost on top. The Aretuza Adepts, on the other hand, can provide a unit with an extra charge each turn, which makes her a great little charge engine. Our biggest supporter for this archetype, however, is Dandelion. As long as he's on the ranged row, he boosts any unit that gains charges by the amount of charges they gained. This can stack up quickly with cards that automatically gain charges, such as the Arbalest and Visigota, and also works on the charges gained by Visigurd, which can easily net you 5 extra points. All of this is nice, but most of these units are usually incredibly vulnerable to control decks. Not so much in this deck, however. Our main protector is Reynard, Queen Meave has temporarily landed her right hand man to Calante in this deck. Reynard Odo boosts any unit you play by one as long as he's on the melee row, providing those units with a bit of extra protection. That's not enough you say? Well, we're just getting started. As mentioned before, we bypass the vulnerability of order units by playing multiple units in one go, and we don't do that just with our leading ability. Queen Adalia allows you to play a copy of a bronze unit from your hand and give it a shield as well, protecting a valuable engine unit in the process. Dandelion Poet allows you to draw a card and then play another card from your hand, refilling your troops while expanding your remaining options. Fernan Roach is played on the enemy side, 
but automatically plays the top two cards from your deck. Keep in mind to at least have a bronze unit in your hand and one on the board to allow for Queen Adalia and reinforcements respectively to play out like they should, in case you haven't played them yet. A unit with charges on the board is also recommended to not waste your winch cards if there are any left in your deck. Speaking of reinforcements, together with the winch are only warfare cards, it allows you to play a copy of a bronze unit on your side of the board. This counts as playing two cards for Visogota who will get two charges and will be boosted by two by Dandelion if he's on the board. See where I'm kinda going with this? To round everything up, we also include the Hand Gate Sword again to support our biggest combo. This artifact allows you to damage an enemy by two and if you kill it, you play a base copy of the destroyed unit. Do this on a weakened Vernon Roach and you'll be able to play him twice in one game. Combined with either Adalia, Dandelion, Poet or Reinforcements, this can net you up to 6 cards played in one turn, again providing Visigota with extra charges and possible boosts. Because of the crazy amount of cards you can play, Visigota can reach up to and beyond 20 points easily just by getting extra charges and being boosted by Dandelion. All of this sets up a massive feedback loop of charges, boosts and damage capable of building up your side of the board really quickly and wiping your opponent off the board. It does require a specific playstyle however. To make the most out of this deck you need to be very conservative in the first round. Try to stick to your bronzes to make a few dents but don't go overboard. I also often play Hubert first since he's a strong but expandable engine. You can use him to weaken your opponent and pull the attention of your opponent's damage dealers. You will most likely trail behind on your opponent like this, but that's the intention. You're saving up for later rounds. If you're losing by a significant margin early, you can do a quick burst with Dandelion, Poet or Queen Adalia to catch up. As long as you can end with 4 cards, you should be fine. Otherwise, try to pass when your opponent hits 4 cards and you still have 5. Otherwise, try to pass when your opponent hits 4 cards and you still have 5 if they started. And if you started, you should be able to keep at least one engine alive by using the tactical advantage, gaining the upper hand in the first round either way. If you won the first round, pass in the second one. If you lost the first round, it all depends on your opponent. Experienced players often try to push at this point, forcing you to use your powerful plays early. Once you feel like this is the case, go all out and use your leader ability to set up some of the combos we'll talk about in a second. If your opponent can't keep up, they'll go into the last round with a card disadvantage and if they can, they probably also waste their best cards and it'll be up to a few bronzes in those final few plays. The third round is what you're aiming for and where the magic happens. You've been saving your gold cards for this after all. I usually start off with Pincer Maneuver immediately. My favorite combo is playing Reynard and Dandelion in one go, so at least one of them survives for later on. They both have 6 power, so this is almost always the case. If you don't have both of them, combining either of them with Visogota immediately boosts him to 4 and gives you 2 boosts you can spend as well. The card you can pick from your deck should either be Vernon Roach or the Hand Gate Sword if you're missing one or the other, or something like Visigurd if you're missing both. After that, it's all about filling up the board. Dandelion Poet and Queen Adalia are both great to get another bronze engine on the board, after which you can follow up with Vernon Roach. After playing those two cards, you will probably have enough firepower to damage Vernon once, allowing you to use the Hand Gate Sword to kill him and replay him for another two cards. When all that is done, you should be gone. Clean up any threats that come up and keep spending those charges you get from the Adepts, Winches and Taller. The stronger your cards get, the more hopeless the situation will become for your opponent, since Dandelion will keep boosting any unit that gains a charge. Finish off with Visigurd and he'll get somewhere between 5 to 10 charges depending on how many of your units are still alive and boosted. This nets you at least 10 points with removal, up to a whopping 25 or beyond if Dandelion is still on the field, since he'll get boosted for each charge he gets. The biggest counter to this deck, however, is a lot of early round removal, taking the wind out of Galante's sails, resulting in a lessened snowball effect. Another great counter is a Tinning Nilf Guardian deck. Since we're playing so many cards, our deck is usually almost depleted by the end of the match, so if it gets tinned even further by your opponent, a lot of your combo cards will lose their value. But otherwise, this deck is a lot of fun to play, so try it out and see how it works for you. And that's it for today, what do you think about the Lioness deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for after all. 
Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynut. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. We're looking forward to the Iron Judgment expansion uh, next week already. So uh, look forward to that. We'll definitely do a video on the new cards there. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!